Hi, I'm Susan Stewart, and I am going to demonstrate how I'm using the Deluxe Dainty Ditcher ruler uh, with a sit-down machine. This ruler is from Sherry Rogers Harrison, and it is the only uh, ruler that I've had any luck with, really, uh, with free motion work on a sit-down machine. Now, I have long admired the ruler work that long arm quilters uh, do with their with their machines, and I love the curved cross hatching and all the wonderful circles and things that they do. But most of those seem to me to be too large to be able to handle with a sit down machine. And by that I mean a machine where the machine's stationary and I'm moving the quilt sandwich under the needle, free motion. This is an APQS George, which is a big machine, but it's set into a cabinet and I move the fabric just the way you would with a domestic machine doing free motion work. And to use a ruler for that, you have to hold the ruler down on the fabric and move the ruler at the same time you move the quilt sandwich. And it's kind of tricky, uh, it seems to me. I like this ruler because it's got a little curve of the one side angles up and it gives you something to hold on to. And also because it's small enough that I can press down gently on the ruler with my finger, but I can also keep contact with the quilt sandwich and the table on the ends of the ruler. I've also used, at Sherry's suggestion, a small strip of Stima Seam 2 under the ruler, now not ironed on, but it's a little bit tacky and that helps grab the fabric. You could also use a spray-on um, temporary adhesive, but um, this this seems to work really well for me. Now I'm going to be doing cross hatching in this little wedge shape here, and to outline the wedge I have some little circles here. I used a decorative stitch on my machine, on my domestic machine, on the quilt top only. And then after I layered my quilt sandwich, I stitched around the circles with monofilament, and then with the silk thread that I'm using for my cross hatching, I stitched uh, on both sides, the arc on both sides of those little circles. So let's get started. I'm down at the bottom here. I am going to backtrack on my stitching on that arc until the side of my foot just touches that piecing line. Now the foot, between, from the needle to the edge of the foot, is a quarter of an inch. And I really should be using a, um, a ruler foot, which is much deeper than this. But this is an older machine and the feet are not interchangeable. It's, it's permanently set in here. So I, um, I can't do that. But this has worked, worked fine for me. I haven't, I haven't had any trouble with it hitting the ruler and um, knocking the timing out. So let's hope that continues. What I'm going to do is take my ruler and touch the edge of it to the side of the presser foot and then the edge of that ruler is right along the, uh, the, the piecing line there. So I'm going to press down gently with the ru on the ruler and hold the fabric to on both sides and then stitch so that I'm sliding both the ruler and the fabric at the same time and I'm keeping the side of the presser foot touching the edge of the ruler. I get to the edge, I'm going to stitch in the ditch back a quarter of an inch until that side of the presser foot just touches that stitching. Now I'll reposition my ruler so that the edge of the ruler is right along the stitching and you can see that these marks on here are also a quarter of an inch apart. So this first quarter inch mark is along the, uh, the piecing line. And then I will go back. Again, keeping the edge of the presser foot, that's the tricky part, keeping the edge of the presser foot uh, snug up against the ruler. And this is the first project that I have done with this, but... Um, I'm excited about the possibilities. It's a little bit harder to move everything with a larger project, and so I wanted to try this on something different than just, you know, an 18-inch sample quilt sandwich. And so this is a medium-sized quilt. I think it'll end up being about 52 inches square. So I have a lot of quilt to move around, and it's not something that I want to uh, keep 
rotating around on the table and this works nicely. So you can see I just keep going back and forth and back and forth a quarter of an inch apart until I get to that arc stitching. Move back a quarter of an inch until my foot touches the stitching line. Reposition my ruler. Go back across. You have to keep pretty nice, pretty firm tension pressure on the on the ruler so that it doesn't slide back and forth on the fabric. Um, also, thing to note is that I do not have a stitch regulator on this machine. So the length of my stitches is determined by how fast I move the fabric and how hard I press the, the foot feed, the accelerator. So I just keep working. And I'm getting close, being done with the stitching going on one side here, or one direction. Back and forth. This is so much nicer than trying to make straight lines uh, with just free motion. If you've ever tried doing that, you know, it's really hard to make straight lines. Just stitching free motion curves are a lot easier than straight lines. And it looks like this will be my last line here. Okay, let's see what we've done. Look at those nice straight parallel lines. Now that could be left like that. You could do piano keys on a border or um, or any any place you wanted straight parallel lines. But I want to do cross hatching. So now I'm going to go up to the arc line and then over until this side of the presser foot touches that seam. And I'll turn my ruler so that now I'm going forward and backward, and I'll line up the edge of the ruler with that uh, with that seam line, and see how I'm putting some pressure on the ruler with my finger, but then I'm also holding the uh, the fabric at the front and back of the ruler so that I can move them all smoothly together. I'll stitch this way. in the ditch for a quarter of an inch until the edge of my presser foot touches that stitching line. Reposition the ruler so that the edge of the ruler is on the stitching line and keep going. The trick is to always keep the edge of the ruler along the edge of the ruler, the edge of the presser foot along the edge of the ruler and back and forth and back and forth. Now I've gone sideways and back and forth but you can put the ruler at a lot of different, you can stitch lines at a lot of different angles. The only place you can't put the ruler is on this back edge of the presser foot because of this arm. So uh, you can, you don't have to go just side to side and forward and back, but you can go diagonally too. Continue on, making my nice little even cross hatching, which I'm really happy about because it's a hard thing to do free motion. Doesn't that look great? Nice little even and regular quarter inch cross hatching and all done with this deluxe dainty ditcher ruler. And thanks Sherry, I'm thrilled to do this. Bye. <laughs>